Forget the Terminator warnings. Microsoft predicts that deep fakes are the greatest threat from artificial intelligence. And Meta doubles down on layoffs, but struggles to find efficiencies. These top tech news stories and more for Friday, May the 26th. I'm your host, Jim Love, CIO of IT World Canada and Tech News Day in the U.S. Worldwide government IT spending is set to rise by 8% in 2023, according to research firm Gartner. Technology leaders in government have been struggling with inflation and its impact on their budgets, as well as difficulty in attracting and retaining tech talent. And even with the layoffs and cuts in big tech, there is still a worldwide shortage of tech talent and governments are feeling the pinch more than others. So. According to Gartner, this has forced governments to re-examine their approaches to counterbalance internal talent scarcity. And if you add to that the need to replace legacy systems, Gartner's 2023 CIO and Technology Executive Survey predicts that 57% of government CIOs plan to increase funding for application modernization in 2023, up from 42% in 2022. The big winner in this new spending will be software providers. According to the report, in 2023, software will continue to be the highest growing segment. Application modernization investments will increase, supported by software as a service based solutions offerings. And the use of low code application platforms is also on the rise and will further accelerate legacy modernization efforts. The report also notes that government CIOs are increasingly concerned that they're not realizing the full benefits of their digital transformation investments. And governments think in terms of their mission and purpose, so software and solution providers would be well advised to be able to link their solutions not just to efficiency, but to the ability to fulfill the outcomes that governments are seeking. Chipmaker NVIDIA became the first trillion dollar chip firm as its stock surged over the past week. NVIDIA's stock rose over 25%, taking it to the trillion dollar market cap, which is double that of its nearest rival. That's the largest one day gain in US market history, beating out the record previously established by Apple last November. And what's driving this growth? NVIDIA's GPU chips are an integral part of artificial intelligence and the spectacular growth of demand for AI systems caused the company to project quarterly revenue that was 50% above Wall Street expectations. That makes NVIDIA the fifth most valuable company in the US and some predict it may even take the number four spot away from Amazon in the near future if growth in the AI market continues. And will it grow? Is it a blip? Well, at least one analyst thinks not. Darren Nathan, head of equity analysis at Hargreaves Lansdowne, told Reuters, we're really just seeing the tip of the iceberg. This could really be another inflection point in technological history, such as the internal combustion engine or the internet. And forget the Terminator. The real and present danger of AI comes from deep fakes. That's according to Brad Smith, president of Microsoft. With the advances in AI technology deep fakes, the ability to alter existing or even generate totally new content that is almost indistinguishable from reality allows anyone the ability to create a realistic fake audio or video. There are numerous examples of this and we'll post a few links in the text version for those who have not seen this in action. Recently, someone who wanted to comment on this podcast did a fake version of the podcast using AI. Thankfully, they only did a fake of my voice but I was almost unable to tell it wasn't me. In a world where cyber crooks are leveraging phishing and fraud like never before, this will indeed be a danger. A familiar fraud scheme where elderly parents are phoned by people impersonating their children and told to send bail money can now feature absolutely realistic voices of these children. And in corporate life, you could get a message from your boss instructing you to make a transfer of funds or some other instruction. What's called spear phishing, carefully targeting emails and other electronic communications that fool employees into taking an action that leaves the company open to a subsequent theft or cyber attack is already one of the most successful ways to circumvent even the best defenses. Deep fakes give the perpetrators a devastating addition to their toolkit. But Smith and others aren't only worried about corporate fraud. The ability of foreign adversaries to interfere in elections and other government activities, things that our adversaries are already doing, is going to get much worse. 
In a speech in Washington, Smith talked about the need to regulate AI and control the damage, saying, We need to take steps to protect against the alteration of legitimate content with an intent to deceive or defraud people through the use of AI. And it seems that layoffs aren't making tech companies more efficient. On Wednesday of this week, Mark Zuckerberg began yet another phase of layoffs, axing 4,000 more staff, with an additional 5,000 expected to follow. There's a real morale boost. Uh, And that's in addition to the 11,000 that were let go already. And Zuckerberg has said that Meta was restructuring teams to increase our efficiency, saying that he had allowed the company to overhire during the pandemic. That was echoed by people like venture capitalist Keith Rabois, who said that this overhiring had led to employees doing fake work. But staff at Facebook have reportedly told Bloomberg that they're unsure about who they're supposed to collaborate with, and how or to whom they can reassign responsibilities. And without a clear direction, staff have been saying they've been making up things to do and ignoring other key priorities. So the fake work problem, if it really happened, has gotten worse and not better. Which raises a question about what role Meta's leadership are playing. After all, they were so valuable that many of them got six-figure bonuses as high as $940,000 in one case, while thousands of employees were being let go to rein in costs. Sort of makes you wonder, who is it that's doing the fake work? That's the top tech news for today. We go to air with a daily newscast five days a week, as well as a special weekend interview with an expert on topics relevant to today's tech news. Follow hashtag trending on Google, Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can even get us on your Alexa or Google smart speaker, and you can find us on YouTube now. Only there we're called Tech News Day. We love your comments, and you can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Mastodon as at the real Jim Love on our Mastodon site, technews.social. Or if that's too much, just leave a comment under the text version of this at itworldcanada.com slash podcasts. And there you can also find all of the links in the text versions. I'm your host, Jim Love. Have a fabulous Friday. And we're going to have an additional day off Monday for Memorial Day. Catch our weekend edition in the meantime. And we'll be back with you next Tuesday morning.